How are you, James? Very well, thank you. I'm a little far away. I know, right? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, anyways, um, do you have any memories? Uh, I assume, and maybe you didn't, but if you read the book uh, when you were a teenager, if you have any memories uh, of the book, what brings you back to... Well, I, I do, but I mean, I read it back then, I read it again when I was 38, so my memories are pretty clean in the book. Um, I remember just loving the fact that it, I thought I was just going to read a horror story, but it was actually so much more than that. It felt more like Stand By Me or The Goonies. Yeah. Um, it felt more like The Breakfast Club or St. Elmo's Fire in some ways, you know what I mean? With all these adults coming back, trying to understand their relationships that are not working anymore. Mm -hmm. It felt, it was funny, it was hilarious. It was also just an ex exploration of small town America, because he's, Stephen King's fascinated with that and he loves that sort of small town community, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the characters that populate that. And you can really tell it's where he lives, you know what I mean? You can really tell it's Bangor, Maine, you know? Mm -hmm. and who is this grumpy old storekeeper, do you know what I mean? It's like someone in his life, you know? And he played it in the movie. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's so rich because it's so personal, it seems to him. Mm -hmm. um, kids in general, I mean, and we see it in, in the first film, um, they, they have a lot of imagination. Do you think that uh, as, as we grow older, like the imagination kind of fades away or it changes, it's different from the one we had when we were kids? I think that I think that when we're younger, we're pretty focused on ourselves and we're pretty, we're pretty inward looking, you know, and that's an infinite universe to explore and, you know, create. But when we are older, our we look outward more and our responsibilities uh, force us to look outward more and everything on the outside is so solid, you know what I mean? Like you look inward and it can be anything. You look at you, you are you. The problems that you bring me are the problems you bring me and I can't imagine them a different way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you go from this inner play space to this outer responsibility place. Yeah. And it's not that I think we have less of a capacity to create and imagine, it's just that we have less space and time to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that being an actor, it kind of gives you like a little yeah. bit of... Uh... I still get to play and I still get to be a kid and I still get to make believe and in imagination, that really is what sets us apart from the animals, isn't it? You know, the mm -hmm. ability to project and to create uh, ideas and concepts and non-tangible things that actually shape us, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the essence of, of what humanity is, isn't it? So you were talking uh, before about um, that it's not just like a horror film, it kind of transcends uh, the genre. Um, there is kind of like a dormant series and a world of like most of the, like the, the things that are happening to the, to the kids. Do you, do you think you can extrapolate somehow what's happening in Derry to our actual society? No, I don't think so. I don't think, that's one of the things that Stephen King writes about. <clears throat> uh, for Bill and Bill's character, he's, he's not a hack, but he, you know, when he goes to writing school and he goes to college to study English, he's, he's almost degraded and poo-pooed because, because he just wants to write a really good story. He wants to write a really good yarn doesn't have to mean anything, doesn't have to have a political standpoint, doesn't have to be trying to change the world. And I think that while well, Stephen King reacts to the world around him, notices the world around him, absorbs it and turns it into stories, I don't think he's consciously trying to um, reflect anything. I don't think he's consciously trying to portray in a meaningful or, or leading way what's happening in America. I think he's more a, a fan of it and a student of it uh, rather than a, a, I don't know, a, a leader or a, or a teacher of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that being an actor somehow it's, it's kind of like a, it's therapeutic for you sometimes? Like you learn about other characters and it helps you to maybe like be a better person or get to know yourself? I better. think actors, we, you know, our work is to spend every day trying to figure out why people do things they do in a kind of possibly a pseudo-psychological way, but also it's quite a personal psychological um, canvas that you have to do that work on. So you're constantly examining yourself, you're constantly questioning why you make these actions or don't, uh, but you're doing it with other people as well. So I guess so, you're kind of studying human behaviour and that may or may not be a healthy thing. 
Yeah, if you're dwelling too much on it, maybe... Yeah, exactly. For me, I think it's quite a healthy thing. I've always kept an eye on myself and always been uh, fascinated by what makes people tick uh, from probably slightly too young an age. But, um, but I think some people it can tear them up and some people aren't made of the right kind of thing or the right kind of stuff to actually do that in a healthy way. Um, but and that's why acting can mess you up. But acting can also like be really therapeutic and really just good fun as well. Yeah, if if you could just take one moment from the whole shooting that for whatever particular reason like stuck to you, uh -huh. which one would you choose? Uh, the moment where Bill faces his demons and triumphs over his demons, um, and his real Achilles heel is his guilt. So the moment where he really faces his guilt and triumphs over it is probably my favourite moment. I don't want to tell you what happens in that scene because it's a nice surprise to the audience. Um, and there was a moment that we filmed which didn't make it into the movie. And I'm, it was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever been involved in. In a swimming pool with all the losers. And, um, uh, but it got cut from the movie. It might end up in the director's cut, so I won't say any more about it, but there's a scene at the end of the movie that might be in the director's cut which is just stunning and getting to film it was whilst I had to hold my breath and that was slightly scary it was just stunning to be a part of that beautiful sequence growing up did you do you relate at all with the losers uh the losers club or uh yeah it's just like bit. it's good to be a loser like like the message you get is like being a loser is fantastic it's like it is once you find each other it is once you once you find your people that I guess it wasn't much fun being the losers before they found each other. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, but I guess that's it, find your people. But then that's an easy thing to say. It's some people go through the whole school, the whole college, and don't find the people until they're adults, you know? Uh, and that's okay too. These guys are lucky enough to find, find their people at like 12, 13, and that's, that's kind of gorgeous. Um, uh, was I like the losers? No, not quite. Was, I wasn't bullied and I wasn't beaten up a lot and things like that. But I definitely wasn't like the coolest kid in town and I also wasn't the toughest kid in town. Um, but I was in a band and we were seen as kind of geeky, I guess. <laughs> cool. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.